Cool. I think we're good to go. Right on. Thank you, sir. Matt, was that the new coming on music for our weekly call that was going on as you muted? Uh, yeah, we're testing it out. Love it. I think it's very hip, very retro. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the Mozilla Webmaker Weekly Community Call. It is great to see so many names self-populating in the 30 to 58 line range of the Etherpad. Uh, we have a really rich agenda today, and so we'll get things started. I'll draw your attention to lines 67 through 76, where there is blog posts, press, and other weekly updates, including the NetVibes dashboard that shows all kinds of online mentions. On line 78, our weekly tradition of introducing any new team members or new folks on the call. So if this is your first time, on a WebMaker community call, let me invite you to hit star 7 on your telephonic device and say hello. Just say your name and uh, where you're calling in from and how you're doing. So do we have any new folks on the call today? Anybody joining us for the first time? Star 7 to unmute. That's great, Bob Silent. Uh-huh. And you're from? Excellent. Very cool. And you're doing good? Right on. Very cool. All right, moving along to line 85. We have a presentation, Webmaker Communications, Engagement, and Contribution. That seems like a fluffy little topic. Matt Thompson, do you want to elucidate that? And can I draw everyone's attention to the screen sharing features of this week's call? If you aren't already loaded up on the screen sharing, take a look at line 21 in the Etherpad, the callinfo.com link. That will show you the tasty home cooking of a slide deck that Matt has put together for us today. Over to you, Matthew Thompson. Thanks, Gunnar. Um, there's also a link for screen sharing in line uh, 95 as well. If folks want to just click on it, and then just enter any name when it asks you for one. And if you can't get that to work, or uh, you prefer things a more old-fashioned way, there's a link to uh, a copy of the slide, the PDF version, in line 97. And this presentation was really prompted by a question from Gunnar, actually, uh, and Michelle asking about um, what uh, we're going to do with communications this year to really focus on contribution. Um, as you know, you've heard us talk a lot about that and the board slides that Mark shared with us uh, a couple weeks ago uh, really focused on how we make contribution the number one metric that matters in WebMaker. So this presentation is really uh, focused on what we're going to do with um, uh, communications in particular to try to make uh, contribution um, the holy grail of everything that we do the rest of this year and into next year. So what I'm going to share with you is it's about 50% baked. Um, so if there's something in here that seems not quite right, um, uh, be gentle. Um, and if there's stuff in here that involves your own work and I haven't had a chance to necessarily um, you know, fully talk about it with you yet. Um, you know, I'm, I'm mostly just hoping to like kick off a conversation and get some feedback. So this is more a half-baked plan for sharing and feedback as opposed to um, you know definitive outline of what we're actually going to do. The two slides that really um, stood out for me and Mark's deck uh, was first off this one. I think we're going to talk about this a lot in communications and engagement and across our teams as these like four key ingredients for how we drive contribution. On-ramps, calls to action, good how-tos and documentation, and kudos, celebrating uh, success. And I think the other key slide um, that I've been thinking a lot about is this one. What are the three pipelines for contribution that we really want to build? When we say we want contribution, what kind do we want? And basically we're saying we're looking for code, content, and teaching. I think that what we're going to try to do with communications um, and what's a little bit different than what we have been doing so far is really focus on these two ingredients, documentation uh, and, and celebration. So one of the areas that we've identified as being a bit weak in WebMaker right now <clears throat> is really good how-tos for contributors. Um, in some cases, uh, the documentation we have is either missing altogether or a little bit out of date. So this is something that the communications team really wants to focus on and help with um, this quarter or next quarter is, is really getting good at those how-tos for um, contributor documentation. And that's a little different than 
uh, how we've been kind of organizing our work so far. Um, when we think about Webmaker Communications, it's really a team of, of two, me and, and Rebecca, and the obvious stuff that we do has really been focused on storytelling and community updates, news, social media, obviously, uh, and press. In addition, we took on a bit of a new role around webmaker.org, um, and that role is really changing. I'll, I'll get into that uh, more, but obviously webmaker.org and thinking about how we make use of that is a big part of communications. What we're going to do going forward, as I mentioned, is add a new bucket uh, and really laser focus on how-tos. Um, and the more I kind of thought about that and how those how-tos and do documentation really fits into those four key ingredients, um, you know, the more I kind of realized that this is actually, I think, um, one of the most important things that, that we'll do over the next couple quarters is getting really good at how-to. I think how-to is, in some ways, two of the most powerful words in, in the English language. And if we're going to build a movement, we really need to get good at that. So very specifically, what, what we mean there in sort of unpa unpacking that bucket is we get really good at documentation and helping contributors find their way through Webmaker. Um, and the expectation is not that uh, we're going to necessarily write all that stuff ourselves. Obviously, all of you are already doing versions of this already. The goal is more to create great models and, and examples, um, and also style guides. So how-tos for writing great how-tos, essentially, is something that we want to take on and try to, try to help you with. Um, and as I mentioned, I think that, you know, the more I thought about this, the more I realized that I think this is probably an essential core competency for Webmaker going forward. When we think about Webmaker projects, really are many how-tos. Um, and so this is something that I think we want to try to become the best in the world at, both in terms of helping people make stuff, but also as a key to helping them contribute more into Webmaker going forward. It's really about breaking complex stuff down into clear steps in a, in a process. And one proposal I'm going to make, and I'm kind of looking for feedback on in this call, is to really make the Webmaker wiki um, the platform for where we get really good at documentation um, and where we host all our, our documentation, or at least links out to our documentation. So the Webmaker Wiki has grown up in a pretty like organic and ad hoc way. So one of the things that I think Rebecca and I are going to offer to take on is cleaning up and updating the Webmaker Wiki and really focusing it on um, documentation and contribution. Um, that in a sense, that the Wiki is the fastest, easiest place for us to start in terms of pulling all our contributor documentation into, into one place um, and making sure that it links out to the, to the right places. Um, now the other thing that I, I kind of wanted to let folks know about is, is a bit of a change in, in terms of how communications and engagement work. And so when we really think about what fits under the Webmaker Communications universe, obviously there's um, storytelling, webmaker.org, documentation, social media and press. The other two pieces are um, you know, email outreach, which Ben Simon um, obviously has been taking the lead on, and we've seen like huge growth in that list since, since Ben came on, and it, it's, it's become an extremely important channel for us. Um, and also events is like a really, really huge part of what Make Webmaker does, led by people like um, Michelle and, and Gunnar. So one of the things that um, we've committed to trying to do is work together more um, and really kind of fold like communications and, and engagement. Um, in my mind, I think at the end of the day, it's really just about engagement. Um, and so thinking about how the Webmaker engagement team um, can work together as a team more. So this is something that I've talked about with, um, with Michelle and Gunnar and Ryan and others. Um, and we're, we're trying it out. We've experimented with um, new engagement team calls. They're brand new. The first one was two weeks ago. The next one is tomorrow. So we started trying to work together as a team more, trying to break down some of those, those silos. And really, again, really laser focusing on contribution as like the core metric for engagement going forward. Um, in terms of like what's next, for communications and, and engagement, here's some of the stuff I'm thinking about that I'm really looking for feedback on. Um, in terms of storytelling, I think that part of what we're going to do is really make that celebration and kudos piece um, a much larger part of what we do. 
making community members um, the star of our story. Um, and you know, we try to do that already, but you know, getting better at that is going to be a big priority for us uh, going forward. Um, we're going to continue to try to do these weekly updates and, and, and digests. Um, we've been getting good feedback from people. We produce a lot of blog posts. So in our minds, these like weekly community updates are where we kind of synthesize that into something that's more of a drinking fountain and less of a, a fire hose um, so that people have a bit more of a digest or synthesized version. Um, and also building a, a kind of a storytelling engine. Building systems and processes is what all of us are going to be really focused on, so I'll say more about that in a, in a minute. The other thing I just wanted to flag is that you know, our role or my role on webmaker.org uh, has changed. Like when we launched webmaker.org, I kind of acted as a bit of an interim uh, product manager, worked closely with the web dev team, did a lot of um, copywriting, editing, content strategy work. Um, so that, that's really changed. Um, now that we have the sort of webmaker product group, you know, my role, and people have asked uh, about this, so I just wanted to kind of make it explicit, I see it's really actually focused on copy. That basically, um, what I'm going to really focus on is being the last word on copy that gets shipped to webmaker.org. Um, and that means we're going to need a clear process for how people get copy shipped to the live site. So we're going to start an issue tracker specifically for purpose. Um, but really our goal is just, you know, it's webmaker.org is the front of the mullet, so we just want to make sure that all the copy and text that's on there follows Mozilla style and is, and is polished and as close to perfect as, as we can get it. Um, and the other thing I'll just call out here is uh, we're going to work on style guides. For example, how to write a project for webmaker.org. So a lot of people are interested in submitting um, projects to the site. How do you write them up in a way that kind of follows webmaker style, um, but it also guarantees um, success? How do, you, how do you make it clear for people to actually build or make the thing that your project is inviting them to make? So there's an early draft version of that, that style guide linked on, on this slide, um, but I just wanted to call that out. Uh, the other thing I'll just mention really quickly is in webmaker.org slash news, um, it exists today. It's mostly a collection of links. Um, a big priority for us is going gonna, is gonna to be to make that good. Um, and so one of the things I think we've struggled with for a long time is um, you know, Planet Webmaker or before it Planet Drumbeat um, is, is great in terms of it aggregates a lot of content from people quickly, but it doesn't do a great job of sorting and categorizing it. So like show me all the posts on badges or show me all the posts on Summer Code Party. Um, so I think solving that, that problem and making webmaker.org slash news really good as a one-stop source of, of figuring out what's going on in Webmaker is going to be the other big priority. Um, the social media stuff, you know, we've seen good growth in our lists. What um, Rebecca is really going to focus on going forward is turning those people into makers and contributors. So not just growing numbers, but deepening engagement. Um, and the other thing I want to call out is um, we've taken the project gallery stuff out of the roadmap, as uh, Mark and Ryan and others have, have mentioned, to focus on badges for the festival. So one of the things that um, Rebecca and I are, are, are working on is using Tumblr as a good stopgap. So if you want to see great examples of popcorn projects or great examples of uh, make your own meme or great examples of what people are making with Webmaker, we're going to kind of offer up uh, Tumblr as a kind of stopgap measure there, as a great place to kind of see what people are making. The press stuff I don't think I really need to say too much about other than we're going to use MozFest to really go deep in the UK and see if we can move the needle on that one market and really change the way that, that people think about digital literacy in, in, in the UK using MozFest as a, as a tent peg. Um, the email outreach stuff is, is obviously more Ben's domain, but I, I want to open up our other channels for people like Ben to, to write for so it's less siloed. Um, and on the event side, I, I guess I mostly just want to kind of call out the fact that I think this is where we've had the most success in terms of those four ingredients. You know, Mark made this point in his slides, but I really see the work that the events team is doing as kind of a model for the rest of us to, to follow. And a lot of the best stories are happening there on the ground at events. So, you know, 
really seeing that as a, as a pipeline for, for our storytelling going forward. And also using the um, event kits, I think, is a bit of a blueprint or a model to follow. I think the event kits are some of the best contributor documentation we have right now, so really want to follow that for, for inspiration and, and modeling. Um, so that's, uh, I think I'll just sort of stop there and, and hope that that works in terms of like just kind of a broad strokes outline of, of where we're headed. Um, I, <laughs> um, the last point I, I wanted to make is, you know, I think we're really going to try to beef up um, contribution is really building a community of contributors to help tell the webmaker story going forward. So when we think about like the storytelling and news piece, um, how we make use of webmaker.org, particularly slash news, and how we write that awesome contributor documentation, which then feeds into our social media channels and, and you know, across the board, that what we really want to do there is, is grow a community of contributors that help do that writing um, and help tell those, those stories so that it's less about me and Rebecca doing stuff and more of us, about us trying to grow a community of, of writers and storytellers and, and reporters um, that help do some of that storytelling work uh, alongside us. So that's it from, for me in terms of presentation. Um, Mary says we have questions in the Etherpad. So in this context, does con contribution mean completing a project? Um, I, I would say not so much. I mean, that's probably like the first rung on a ladder of engagement. So yeah, absolutely, like making a project with WebMaker is totally the kind of, the kind of participation that we want to see. Um, but beyond that, we want to actually take people up a ladder of engagement where they actually build WebMaker alongside us. Uh, and in particular, in terms of like how communications and engagement goes at WebMaker, also like involving people as contributors in terms of helping to tell the story, helping to write documentation, or helping to like write up their own uh, WebMaker projects that they submit to the site. Um, question on line 107, in the style guide, could you include some information about how to share a story about an exceptional community member and where to submit it? Um, that is a fantastic idea. And that really fits into that kudos piece that we talked about earlier. So yeah, big enthusiastic yes. Um, can community members self-nominate or nominate others for recognition? I mean, absolutely. I mean, this is something that, you know, I think we really need, like we need, we need documentation to make this happen, but we also need better like on-ramps, like better infrastructure. So I think one of the things that we, um, I don't want to say struggle with, but one of the things I want to get better at is, you know, what's the infrastructure we need to make it easier for people to tell their own stories? Um, so, you know, we, we use a, a, a collection of channels for this, like we use, um, you know, hash moz party or hash moz fast. Um, and I was actually just talking with Michelle earlier about how we're going to, you know, some plans to use stuff like Lanyard to make it easier for, for session leads and people to tell their own story at the festival. Um, but I'm really, I'm really curious about the kind of infrastructure we need to build to do this in a, in a lasting way. Uh, Doug, thank you for the style guide um, example to potentially follow in line 111. Um, Using uh, Remo and Mozilla reps, particularly in the UK, uh, and this work is um, already started. Um, I think some folks are actually working on uh, documentation specifically for Remo. Um, maybe folks who are working on that could say more under line 113. Uh, question on, on 115. There's some tension between making contribution the number one focus and seeing yourself as the capital P, capital C, capital E, the copy editors. Can we loosen control to make contribution more seamless and scalable? So I, that's a great question. I would say, you know, this is where the sort of front of the mullet, back of the mullet um, kind of comes in. So, I mean, my, my Personal take is that copywriting and communications in the back of the mullet should be wide open and extremely fast and loose. So 
I mean, yes. Um, to be clear, what we're talking about is a small number of front of the mullet pages, like um, you know, the front page of webmaker.org or the front page of the Mozilla Festival site, um, but also the projects. Okay, I think it's really important that the copywriting for webmaker projects be extremely crisp and extremely uh, clear, uh, because if it isn't, then it's really frustrating for users. Um, so in the same way that we do quality assurance around code, um, you know, we have back of the mullet places for code and prototypes where, you know, it's kind of okay if the software breaks, um, but we also have, you know, um, you know, front of the mullet kind of marquee platforms where we, we do quality assurance uh, and we make sure that the software works. Uh, and I would say that that's kind of the same standard that we want to set for copy going forward as well. But I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know what other people think. Uh, can you please make a table of contents for the wiki? That is an outstanding suggestion. And this is kind of what I, what I meant is the wiki um, has kind of grown up organically mm -hmm. so far. And I think we kind of want to make the webmaker wiki a thing. Like I think that you know, one, of, one of the proposals I'd make is that over this quarter and next, that we actually make the webmaker wiki something that is a little more like productized is the wrong word, but cleaned up with a clear table of contents and navigation and really like laser focused on documentation and contribution. That that's really kind of the, the life that the Webmaker Wiki should take on going forward. But again, that's a proposal that I'm just kind of throwing out for feedback. Um, how will you work with teams to ensure the contribution process you come up with work for others? Um, I guess I would say, you know, first and foremost, these calls, and then secondly, the new uh, engagement team calls that, that, that I just mentioned. Um, those are Wednesdays at, at 11.30. Um, we're still kind of firming them up in terms of agenda and protocol, but um, that's, the, that's the kind of short answer. Let me know if, if folks have other suggestions. So I, I don't know, Gunnar, there's, I can keep kind of answering questions in the etherpad. I'm just conscious of, of, uh, of time. Should I maybe just kind of end here and then we can just keep um, answering questions and, and chatting in, in Etherpad? Sure, yeah, maybe just do a scan of what's left and just see if there's anything that really bears answering in an audible way and then we can move on. And while you're scanning, I just want to put my fist in the air and say, Brett, you and me both, baby, don't we feel marginalized by these mullet metaphors as mullet-challenged <laughs> individuals? Yeah, so Gunnar, I think I, think I can, um, can kind of just answer in chat, and, and I'm really grateful for all this feedback. So I'll just, I'll just keep chatting with people in either chat. I guess the question for you, Gunnar, is, um, you know, does this go some of the way towards answering the question from you and Michelle around how we're going to focus on driving uh, contribution going forward? I think it definitely does get some of the way there. Um, speaking as a wiki lover, anytime a wiki is a central component of a contribution strategy, my danger Will Robinson arms stop, start flopping because there's just large swaths of demographics that just don't want to contribute to that pipeline. And so I think a very interesting conversation is what's the contribution vector for people that just are allergic to wikis or otherwise don't want to do the extra steps of creating an account or logging in. And I know that there's two schools of thought, one of which is the tough love, you know, you need to do that to be a part of the community. But I think that would be, I think that would really be an important conversation to have is, I, you know, it, the, the piece of trivia that I always quote that annoys me because it's true, but um, some nonprofit donation consultants did a study with Red Cross about their online donation form. Uh, because it was statistically significant number of donations per day. And it turned out that asking for someone's title, Mr. Ms. Mrs. Ms., reduced donation conversion by over 20%. And I was like, wow, just asking for the title, that's incredible. And so I just think it's important that as we think about contribution, we think about, shall we say, lubrication and optimization so that, yes, I think Wiki is a very egalitarian final resting place for most of this stuff, but I think we really want to worry about user experience, and I think we want to have a real aggressive user experience testing component to the way that we design these contribution processes. Yeah, totally. Well, let's just agree. I mean, everybody agrees, so let's just make that, you know, like 
a design challenge or design constraint. I mean, for me, it's less about you know trying to get people to edit wikis because I totally agree with you. It's like pulling teeth, and more it's about just making sure that um, you know we have a definitive collection or list of stuff like contributor documentation. So you know, like if I want to contribute to popcorn tomorrow, or if I want to contribute to webmaker storytelling. Um, you know, I think in a lot of cases we have assets and pages and, and you know, documentation in various drafts. I guess what I think me and Rebecca in particular are struggling with is just knowing where to find all that stuff. So I guess, you know, for us it would just be useful to just have some, some well-guarded wiki pages that just link out to the right places um, and, and not necessarily expect people to have to, like, do a lot of contribution on a wiki. I think that sounds great. And if I were putting in one more vote, I would vote for the principal pages to be organized around what do you want to get done versus how do we think about it. Because I think that's the other fail point of contribution places is they tend to be implicit taxonomies for the way an organization views itself rather than aware of outcomes that people want to accomplish. Hmm. That's useful. Cool. Well, thanks, Gunnar. Thanks, thanks everybody. Um, yeah, so thanks, everybody. This is great feedback. And, uh, published it. Well, at the I, I just want to honor Jess, who's been waiting off stage so patiently. The curtain is pulling back, and we're now going to get a mood board for WebMaker. Jess, line 138 in El Etherpad. And let me draw people's attention to the Pinterest link on line 140 so you can get ahead of the load curve. Jess, take it away. Star 7 on mute. Hello. Um, <coughs> Speaking of those who are eager beaver contributors, um, I'm coming to everyone with a call to action. And um, basically we're, we're starting to think about how we can make webmaker.org a more cohesive offering. And so what we're doing is we're going to be creating, we are creating a new board to really get a pulse for what we are thinking webmaker.org is and should be. And for those of you who don't know what a mood board is, I put on line 142 a small definition that in essence they're a compilation of inspirational elements that are used by designers to get ideas for the design direction for a project. And, and so Pinterest is an experiment, but also is a potentially valuable tool in that it allows you to scavenge the web and collect ideas from different kinds of resources and websites that already exist and are fantastic and awesome. Um, and so what I'm looking for is for people to, who can help us to gather things like similar websites, interesting visuals, interesting text, inspiring quotes, um, colors that they like, <laughs> those kinds of things. And if you can add your name to line 145 and below. <laughs> um, our hope is that that I will be contacting you after you get it, mainly because I am, I will say completely on the record that I am um, hoping that we can try Pinterest out as something that we can, as a resource for us to develop and to work on as a community, but I'm not sure that it's going to work. And one of the reasons I'm not sure it's going to work is that for us to do a collaborative mood board, um, I have to give you access to collaborate with me. <laughs> So what I'll do is you'll add your name here, and then I will contact you um, with that that information so that you can so that you can collaborate with us. <laughs> um, but our our hope, and I say our, but it's Chris Appleton, myself, Kate Hudson. Our hope is really that we will be able to gather names of people who can engage in conversations around design. And this is just our first our first dipping our toes in that in the water for that conversation. So that's. That's, that's my five minutes. I probably went less than five minutes working on curtness. <laughs> Excellent conservation of time. Thank you very much, Jess. Um, <clears throat> questions, anybody? Things that people want to raise or observe or opine? I see some people have signed up to uh, <clears throat> help you develop this out. <clears throat> Uh, collaboration requires acceptance, the meta issue, line 154. Not quite sure what that means. Jess, do you feel able to respond to such an existential observation, or would you like elaboration? I'm going to get that from Carla. It just sounds like a Carla, Carla sentence. It's I, got that <laughs> Carla light pink hone to it. Oh, it does. <laughs> no, it, it does. It's, it's true. 
that's why I'm saying this is a little bit of an experiment um, because because you have to be received into you have to kind of play by the rules in order to collaborate. Um, and so I think that on some level this is like a controlled level of collaboration, and on other levels it could go totally crazy and um, messy. And I I always lean towards messiness because for messiness you can pull out interesting new ideas. And, and refine them as you get to other stages, like the production stage of a project. So, so I, I am proceeding, but I also feel like I'm proceeding with a little bit of caution and awareness that this might be a failed attempt. But I don't think we'll fail. We will not be denied. <laughs> right on. Any other, any other feedbacks or inputs? I'm seeing some suggestions from onset sessions in the in the back channel. Um, right on. Any other questions or comments? Just an invitation to join the experiment. Excellent. Well, Jess, thank you for driving on this. Super ex exciting to see where this leads to. It is time, beautiful people, to turn your attentions to line 159 in the etherpad of record. Rebecca. Could you tell us about the Summer Code Party and your picks for Best of Summer, 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 Summer? Mic check. Mic check confirm. Excellent. Um, I said one minute, and I'm going to try to stick within it. Um, as you might notice, it is now on line 174. Um, please open up that Etherpad and let me know about all the things that we have either forgotten to mention, uh, have sitting around on our desktops and file folders, different kinds of events, um, special people that you would like to nominate. This is a place to catch everything that we might have missed um, over the summer. We're particularly looking for um, more popcorn content and especially um, anything from x-ray goggles. We're, we're doing quite well on symbol. Um, and you know, you can sort of see a, a great big list of things that are on there. We, of course, have many more things, but I'm hoping that you will show me what we don't have. Um, there's a couple of links in there that will show you a little bit about what we've got on collection so far if you're looking for um, ideas to sort of spark your memory. And uh, please add to the Etherpad. Um, you'll see the results of your efforts at the All Hands and hopefully at the festival. Thank you. Did I make it under a minute? I'm sorry, my stopwatch jammed at second 43. <laughs> so yeah, from what I can tell, you did perfect. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thanks. Any questions or clarifying comments? You're getting some love from Carla. All right. Anybody else looking for comments, looking for questions? Otherwise, help Rebecca pick the best. All right, line 187, Summer Code Party Wrap-Up Events. That does not have a name next to it. Matt, do we know who might be speaking to the Summer Code Party Wrap-Up, given that Ben is noteworthily off the radar? Oh, it's me. It's Heather. It's Heather Payne. Heather, come on board. Talk to us. Hey, can everyone hear me? We can hear you. Cool. So uh, as you all know, uh, we had a pretty big event in Toronto to kick off the Summer Code Party uh, back in June, and so we are doing a wrap-up event here as well. Uh, we'll be, they'll be a little bit different. It's a little bit more kitchen table style, I guess, and really inspired by um, the work that uh, I've been doing through Ladies Learning Code, which is uh, mostly workshop-based. Um, so we're going to be doing an intro to HTML and CSS uh, using Symbol on the 23rd from 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, we're doing 40 parent-kid pairs, or I guess up to 40 parent-kid pairs, uh, so 80 people all together. It uh, shouldn't be a problem because um, Ladies Learning Code did a mother-daughter workshop a few months ago and, and easily had uh, 40 people out at that, so I don't see a lot of issues. Uh, the parent-kid thing is mainly to avoid having to do police checks for all of the volunteers. Um, so, and also I think it's sort of fun to get parents involved and, and see what, that their kids have fun creating uh, web pages and things like that. Uh, we have Kate Hudson and John Buckley from the Toronto office leading the workshop. And we're, they're going to be using um, the Ladies Learning Code, HTML, and CSS 
workshop as sort of a guide, um, cutting out a lot of the things because it's uh, obviously a full day workshop for adults. So we'll be toning it down a little bit and integrating Zimble rather than uh, using, you know, a text editor or something like that. Um, and then from 4 to 5 p.m., uh, we'll have some kind of snack, and we're going to demo some awesome projects from the summer uh, that were created in Toronto. So stuff from the first Summer Code Party event, uh, stuff from the Girls Learning Code Summer Camp that was hosted at Mozilla, um, and anything else. I'm going to integrate sort of a call for projects um, with to the Eventbrite page where people are signing up. So we'll see if uh, anything comes out of the woodwork. Uh, focusing obviously on things that are created by, by youth. Um, I know a lot of adults creating cool stuff, but this is obviously for showcasing things that youth, youth are doing. Uh, registration will open in a week. Um, obviously the event is free. Uh, volunteers can sign up on the same page, and I included the URL there. It's not live yet, but uh, that will be the URL. Um, so you can make a note if you like. Um, basically, we're going to aim for a 4 to 1 ratio, which is exa exactly what we have at our Ladies Learning Code workshops or better. Um, so anyone who knows uh, basic HTML and CSS and lives in Toronto is definitely encouraged to come out and uh, spend some time teaching. And um, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Definitely uh, much easier to coordinate than the Hive pop-up that we did back in June, um, since this is the kind of thing that you know I, I, I do basically twice a month right now. Um, so we're just doing this one for, for kids. Awesome. Thank you so much, Heather. Any questions or comments? Right on. Looking forward to that wrap up. And uh, I would certainly put in the, the word of encouragement to everybody to realize that finishing strong on Summer Code Party really does matter. And so I really encourage folks to be paying attention and be really trying to offer support as we work through those last few weeks of the Summer Code Party and just really push it across that virtual, metaphorical, conceptual finish line. Line 207, Mozilla Festival Update. James Brown might have been the hardest working person in show business, but Michelle Thorne is certainly one of the hardest working people in Mozilla land. Mozilla Festival, Michelle, update, go. <laughs> You're on a roll today. Um, cool. <laughs> So we've got some website teasers. If, um, I invite you to check out lines 210 and 211. Um, Chris Appleton has been putting together some really nice design stuff for us, and Andrew and Ross have been helping us code it um, so we can launch the uh, website soon. But if you just want a peek of what the, um, the look and feel of the festival site will be like, you can take a look. Um, we've also got um, 13 session proposals in so far, which is, which is great. There's lots of um, good stuff in there. Um, the link to submitting a session is on line 216. If you know people who have got a great session idea, um, or you yourself have a great one, um, we definitely invite you to see the festival as a place where you can um, teach people something, where you can test an idea, where you can build something in collaboration with others. So definitely think of that um, submit page as a place for you to, to um, try stuff out and uh, yeah, showcase and teach um, in London. Um, also, there is another really great way to, to get involved. You can sign up as a volunteer. Um, we've got the link on line 220. Um, it's a great way to, to meet people and to help make the festival happen. And you also get to participate in the festival. So um, we try to spread out shifts so that um, you can work some and then just participate um, through the rest of it. So um, we definitely encourage people to consider um, signing up as a volunteer. It's lots of fun. There's a thank you champagne and also and even the opportunity to wear the Firefox costume. So lots of um, fun things happening as a volunteer. And last two shout outs and updates. Um, I think we'll have um, Someone join a little bit later to talk about this in more detail, but we're doing an iteration on what the human API looks like. So for those who aren't familiar with it, the human APIs are people who are like floating sources of knowledge and expertise at the Mozilla Festival. They wear lab coats and they basically participate in sessions and offer themselves as a um, as just a knowledge base. Um, last year it was particularly for, for tools and technology. But we had this idea that this is also, um, we can have human APIs that also teach particular skills. So like for example, you know, storytelling or 
JavaScript or writing how-tos, um, that we could also think about these floating people um, yeah, helping others learn stuff throughout the festival. So Chris McAvoy, um, whose email is on line 225, is our human API curator this year. And he's just helping you know, um, recruit people who could be in this role, help them get started. So if you have an idea for someone you think, for a person or a technology you think would be um, a good fit uh, in this role, definitely give him a, shout him a line. And lastly, for anyone who's London-based or knows folks in London who would be interested, come have a pint with us tomorrow night. Um, we'll be in the Mozilla space. Um, uh, Mark, will, Mark Sermon will be there, um, a bunch of people from the festival team, and a bunch of people who are running things and volunteering at the festival. It's a great place to just have a beer and have a chat um, and plan for November. So that's it for me. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. And if it doesn't go without saying, I think everyone should be buying Michelle an adult beverage. All right. <clears throat> Turning attention and looking first for questions. Um, oh, and I just think it's really thoughtful that Jess has volunteered Brian to be the beer denizen in the Brooklyn domain. So a uh, very important process point there for those that are not able to cross the puddle. Um, Turning to line 242, uh, again Matt, this is one that lacks an owner and it's a lightweight little fluffy question we can probably be done with in under 30 seconds. But uh, general question at line 242, what is our webmaker strategy for JavaScript and where is that conversation happening? Learning team call, Thursday, 10 a.m. EST. Anybody want to elaborate on that meta question and that date and time? I'm madly scanning to match the color of the entry to a name in the Etherpad roster. Could it be Deep? Hey, good This is Doug. Can you hear me? Doug, tell us more. Um, right, so um, that was Deep who answered, and um, I think it was Laura who replied. Basically, the learning team call on a Thursday is a good, a good place to go to talk about that stuff. Um, if, you, if you want to talk absolute specifics, which I think Deep does because he's got that Water Bear website where um, it teaches people JavaScript and, and that kind of thing, um, then, then do talk to me because um, I'm looking at the skills and literacy and everything like that. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, um, do email me, doug at mozillafoundation.org, or do um, come to the learning team call to talk to the whole team. Cheers. Awesome, Doug. Thank you so much. Anybody else want to share thoughts on Webmaker Strategy for JavaScript? Excellent. And Rebecca's hanging with these. Loving it. Okay, there be dragons there. Ross, wisdom, wisdom shared from the developer mindset. I love it. Okay, friends, I'm looking at the Etherpad and it's telling us our journey together on this day and time may be coming to a close. Um, I'm having a hard time parsing all the buzzwords in line 246 as I try to multitask. But uh, are there any other agenda orders of business? Are there any other items that people would like to service that have not been chronologically recorded in the Etherpad in the neighborhood of 240X? Let me, well, that was a nice little epilogue sound. Let me draw your attention to the calendar link in line 255 as well as the uh, next week agenda link. Thank you to everyone who spoke, contributed, participated, or otherwise hung out on this Mozilla Weekly Webmaker Community Call. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same channel. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye, Gunnar. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.